Hey everybody, and welcome to the latest episode of the Rock and Roll Experience with Mike Brunn. On this quick episode, we'll do a little tribute to the late Lee Kerslake, who lost his battle yesterday with prostate cancer. Lee was 73 years old and played on one of the most classic albums ever, Ozzy Osbourne's Blizzard of Oz. We wanted to make sure that Lee got the recognition that he deserves, but often doesn't get. Rest in peace, Lee. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button below. If you're listening to one of my podcasts, subscribe over there as well. Also, head on over to Facebook and follow my page, The Rock and Roll Experience with Mike Brunn, where each and every day we talk about all the rock and roll music that you love. Now, let's jump in on our tribute to Lee Kerslake. Hey everybody, welcome to the latest episode of the Rock and Roll Experience with Mike Brunn. Once again, I have with me, you know who he is, my partner in crime, Mr. Vincent LaRussa. How you doing, buddy? I'm okay on this Sunday morning. Yes, yes, and this is what, I think the third, maybe fourth one like this that we're doing where we're unexpectedly getting together. Drummer Lee Kerslake passed away yesterday after a long battle with cancer. So, um, you know, sadly, I guess we'll be doing more and more of these as our musical icons get older and, uh, yeah. So how did you hear about it yesterday? Uh, I, I actually saw some pictures on Facebook mm -hmm. of him. And as soon as I, I saw that, I knew yep, yep. it's not typical that you'll see pictures of Lee, right. um, often, you know, maybe Absolutely. as some other more popular drummers. Absolutely. But I saw some, I think there was a picture of him in the studio when he was younger. It was a black and white photo. It was actually a cool photo. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh boy. I yeah. had heard that he was sick. I think I had heard an interview or he was on a podcast. I, I might have listened to it, I think, earlier this year. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about his fight. I think he was with, uh, it might have been Eddie Trunk. Okay. And, uh, so I knew that he was ill and mm -hmm. that he was fighting this. And uh, so... Yeah, you know, we, I feel like we're doing way too many of these you know, recently. So. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and look, he was 73 years old. I know he was fighting prostate cancer for a number of years. Um, yeah. And I think more recently, I and mean, we grew up, obviously, we, we knew his work from Ozzy Osbourne. He was also in Uriah Heep, and you know, I don't want to yeah. you know, not mention that. But for you yeah. and I, we grew up early 80s with those classic first two, I'll call them Randy Rhodes, Ozzy albums. And, right. you know, I know he wasn't the touring drummer, so he gets lost on a lot of people who maybe wasn't reading the liner notes because he wasn't credited on the album. Right. But but he's the drummer on those two classic Randy Rhodes albums. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, you could arguably say Blizzard of Oz might be top five of mm -hmm. the most classical um, or most classic uh, heavy metal records of mm -hmm. that era, mm -hmm. um, especially being Randy's first record that he recorded on with. Uh, with Ozzy and he was a relative unknown at that point. I know he was with Quiet Riot, but he really wasn't known at that time. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, I mean, what a what a tremendous and unique drummer Lee was. Mm -hmm. um, and and why I say that is, I mean, a song like Crazy Train, mm -hmm. the fact that he used almost like a disco mm -hmm. groove for that, you know, that mm -hmm. you know that sixteen note hi hat pattern, yep. mm -hmm. four on the floor pattern. Just, just a, you know, it's just an incredible idea for mm -hmm. such a metal song, you mm -hmm. know. Right, um, right. But I mean, just having that with Bob Daisley's, you know, bass line in there, it mm -hmm. just is like that was the perfect sauce mm -hmm. um, for that song. And it really was, I, I feel, makes it so unique. Um, and of course, Randy's guitar riff and, and his playing on it—it's just incredible. Absolutely. But yeah, so. Just an unbelievable talent, and uh, you know. absolutely. Now, you know, while I'm while I'm mentioning what I'm about to mention, I want you. I know you have the, the computer right over there. I think he even has a writing credit or two. Yeah. On the Blizzard of Oz album, right? To, to, do you have that at your fingertips? Uh, no, I know he's. I, I know he has two writing credits. I did check that. Okay. Yeah. On on one on Diary and and I think he maybe No Bone Movies. I think he's okay. got a writing mm -hmm. credit. Mm -hmm. Um. And I'm trying to think of the other one, but yeah, he does have two writing credits. Right. As well. I was just, you know, reading about him last night. I did, I did notice that. Right. Uh, yeah. Which I always thought I, I, you know, again, I didn't look it up before this, but I remember always holding the album in my hands and seeing him have a couple of writing yeah. credits, and I was always like, ah, oh, that's impressive. Of course, more times than not, you know, this the drum is 
don't have writing credits on albums, especially yeah. a case like this where it's really an Aussie solo album. Now, saying that, yeah. I know the band was originally going to be called Blizzard of Oz, and there's a promo right. photo, and if I could, I think I have it, I'll, I'll superimpose it on, on this chat. There's a promo yeah. photo of the original band with Randy yeah. and Ozzy and Lee and Bob, which is really cool. And um, the, the title on it is not Ozzy Osbourne, it's Blizzard of Oz, which, which I yeah. think is pretty cool, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, one of the things, too, is if you remember, for at least Diary of Madman, Tommy Aldridge was credited on that record. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Tommy has stated that clearly if you listen to that record that, and you know how I play, that's not me playing on mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And he was saying that in a good way. He wasn't saying that as a bad thing. You sure. Know? sure. Um, but that was, you know, it's kind of unfortunate. I think we all know about what happened, I think, in the early 2000s where um, I think him and Bob, um, <clears throat> Lee and Bob, I think the, uh, they were looking for royalties for those mm -hmm. records. Mm -hmm. And the Ozzy camp said, okay, we re-record your tracks. And they mm -hmm. got Robert, uh, I feel like they never pronounce his Trudeau, yeah, right. whatever the heck his name is. From Metallica. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, Borden, Mike Borden, I think, played drums on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I remember when my brother had gotten the CDs and just listening to it. I mean, they did a good job, but it just felt like sacrilege. Like, how do you take these guys... It's just so it was just felt very dirty to me. I just I think to this day, I've never listened to either of those reissues for that reason. It's just like you said, it felt very dirty to me. It was, yeah. To me, it was not cool. And I know they since have gone back <clears throat> to the originals. But um, at that time, I 2011, remember thinking, I yeah, think they did. Yeah, I was like, yeah, not 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 cool at all to me, in my opinion. Well, they did listen to the fan because there was a fan outcry Absolutely. Um, again. Uh, those guys did a great job trying to play those parts or mm -hmm. playing those parts, I should say. But uh, I'm glad that the fans spoke, and when they did the remasters or the reissues or whatever, they uh, they put the original tracks back in. But uh, absolutely, yeah, it's a shame. Um, you know, someone like um, like Lee, you know, probably should have gotten more credit in his career, and maybe played with some other bands where he would have been more not I want to say respected, um, but just more known in, in the drumming community. Mm -hmm. When you when you when you name you know, most of the drumming icons, unfortunately, he's not one that's probably going to be mentioned by a lot of drummers. You mm -hmm. get all the obvious choices, the Bonhams and yep. and such. But, but I mean, listen to the top, uh, I mean, o Over the Mountain. I was going to say, yeah. I mean, the intro to that song, um, I remember seeing the drum clinic with uh, with Chad Smith. Mm -hmm. and they think Chad Smith, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't really think him and, like, Ozzy Osbourne, although... Chad, growing up in the 70s, listened to a lot of, of classic rock and, yep. and some metal stuff. And he was talking and, and demonstrating of like how he, you know, he, sh he shredded in, in the drum, in his drum studio, whatever, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. on that intro, uh, which is, again, a testament, again, to say this is like an iconic, you know, drum part. And it is a very, you know, difficult part to play and, mm -hmm. and uh, just an awesome way to, you know, to start off a tune. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. Now, I, I've always thought through my life that to me, there's two songs that I love the drum and intro of the song, Kisses yeah. Creatures of the Night, and yeah. like you just said, Over the Mountain. To me, those two yeah. just like, and it's odd that they both came out right around the same time, give or take a year or so. Um, but those two songs, and, and you know, like you said, he gets no credit for this at all, but it's to me, it's such a great drum intro to a song that. Mm. Um, most people don't even think of it or, or, or know his name. And it's a shame because, like you said, he doesn't get the credit he deserves. Yeah. And you might know better. Well, you will know better than I if, if Eric took from, you know, that intro. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, I don't know I've, if never heard, I've never heard them say it, but I have thought that because, you know, definitely the Diary of Man Man album came out first, was recorded first. Mm -hmm. But I've never heard right. them say that. But I had to wonder because there are certainly, in my mind, and I'm not a drummer, but there are similarities between the two, but I've yeah. never heard anybody say that. Yeah, yeah. No. We don't, we, I don't know if we'll ever know that, but uh, mm -hmm. I, e either way, I mean, it's it's such, such a great way to, to start off. And that was the first tune on the, that starts the record, right? Yep, yep, exactly. It's the yeah. first tune on Zyra yeah. of Mad Man, yep, yep. Yeah. It's the same as like Creatures of the Night, so it's kind of like, hmm. Right, exactly, exactly. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. It's a sad day, obviously, his passing, and um, you know, I hope in his passing he starts to get some of the credit that he, quite frankly, deserved during his lifetime. Yeah, and I think towards the end, didn't they? He finally get his gold or platinum yes. records or something like that. Yes. I mean, mm -hmm. so 
even that, you know, again, I always roll my eyes at the, yep. I don't know if this is the, the Sharon thing or who in the Aussie camp, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, that they finally did the right thing by him. I, I think, unfortunately, it took him getting sick that they said, Let, let's do this before, you know, yeah. he unfortunately passes. But at least he, he died knowing that he got that recognition that he so much wanted and deserved. You Absolutely. Know? Um, so absolutely yeah i i think that they gave him those awards uh, two or three years ago i remember reading about that okay. although i think i saw ozzy post yesterday that um they hadn't spoke for like 35 or 40 years something close to that so they obviously sent wow. him the awards but they still there was no relationship between the two of them which, which is a shame because you know the guy is drumming on what's arguably one of the top 10 best hard rock albums of all time in blizzard of oz right i, th- I yeah. think you know he, it's tough to argue that that's, that album's not in the top yeah. 10, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. And like you yeah. said, his drumming, Crazy Train, and, and other songs on that is just incredible. Yeah. 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 We, we can't understand why some people, you know, they, they hold grudges or whatever it is. You know, mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. why you know, we we'll always say, while you have the people here that, you know, who are important in your life or who made a difference in your life, you should, you know, you should reach out to them and mm-hmm. tell them that. Because, you know, you may not get the chance. I know, I, I, I always say, I don't know, I try to be preachy on this thing. Mm-hmm, and I think mm-hmm. I think maybe when it was Bob passed, I had made some comments about that. And some people had said, you know, thank you for saying that. I reached mm-hmm. out to this one or that one because, mm-hmm. you know, you made it. I mean, just do what you need to do because Absolutely. it's really important. So Absolutely. And, you know, sadly, with all of these kind of things, more times than not, it comes down to money. And I think that's why Lee and Bob first were kicked out of the band in 81-ish. Yeah because they were looking for a little bit more money, um, which is understandable, right? Yeah. Um, and it obviously remained about money for decades and recognition. And like you said, I'm glad Lee got the recognition at the back end of his life because I'm sure he died happier knowing that he got that recognition. It's just yeah. a shame he didn't get that recognition earlier because to your point before, perhaps he would have been playing with other hard rock or metal bands during the 80s. Um, you know, it's, it's a shame he didn't get that opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I totally agree. Yeah, but he is on those classic Ozzy albums. He is on the Uriah Heap albums. He played with them a number of years, right? I don't want to forget yeah. that. But um, yeah. you know, for me, I know yesterday I heard it and it was like, hey, let, let's let's toss on Blizzard of Oz. Um, you can never go wrong listening to that. Yeah. And yesterday was as good a reason as any. So, um, yeah. You know, yeah, and that, that... and Diary of a Madman. Oh, Diary absolutely, of a Madman. absolutely. Yeah. I think I think sometimes Diary of a Madman gets kind of lost a little bit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because of Blizzard of Oz is so iconic, but right. still another great. Re- I mean, that has Believer on it. Yep. Right, is on. Yep, on Believer's that. on that. Yes, the last song on yeah. side A. Uh, and I think the reason Diary for some fans gets forgotten is because for many years pretty much his entire career, Ozzy wouldn't perform many songs from that album in concert. Yeah, yeah. I know he did Flying yeah. High again. Um, he did Believe Her. But even when he toured for that album, he was only doing two or three songs, and then the rest was Blizzard, right? So I think yeah. for some fans that are maybe a little bit more casual, not diehard Ozzy fans, you tend to your point to forget Diary. For that reason, it's Ozzy's fault. But to me, there's some songs on that that are just as good, if not better, than... Mm. of Oz, but that's a whole nother yeah. episode. <laughs> so yeah, I, yeah, to, yeah, I won't yeah, even get yeah. into that. But yeah. um, you're, yeah. you're right; they're two absolutely incredible classic albums. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Anything else you want to say before we have to uh, sadly wrap this up? Say goodbye to Lee, and uh, yeah, anything else? Uh, as I usually end these things, is again celebrate the, the man's work. Listen mm-hmm. to those records if you're a Uriah Heap fan. I know he played on, and I think he played, it was with them for at least nine years or yeah. eight, something like that. So yeah. he played on a lot of records. And then I think he returned to the band later on in life also. Mm-hmm. Um, and he played on a couple other solo records and some stuff that I saw. You just go to Wikipedia, check out his discography, yep. and just listen to his work. And even if you're not a fan of those particular artists, just listen to the drums mm-hmm. at the very least. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And, you, and, you, and you're going to get a, uh, certainly going to get a, a treat of like what his talents were. So. absolutely absolutely so all right buddy let's hope as i say usually with these let's hope we don't have to do another one of these sometime soon um everybody who's watching thanks for watching like vin said check out some of those recordings lee was on you won't be disappointed enjoy the drum tracks enjoy what he's given to us and lee thank you for all those memories yep. all right everybody talk to you soon
Later. Later. Alrighty, there you have it. Thanks once again, Lee, for all the great memories and the great drumming, especially on those classic Ozzy Osbourne albums. As we noted, Lee does have a writing credit on No Bone Movies on the Blizzard of Oz album. And I've also gone back and confirmed he actually has writing credit on six of the eight songs on the Diary of the Madman album. Thanks again, Lee, for all those great memories and great songs. Rest in peace. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button below. If you're listening to one of my podcasts, subscribe over there as well. Also, head on over to Facebook and follow my page, The Rock and Roll Experience with Mike Brunn, where each and every day we talk about all the rock and roll music that you love. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. See you next time and rest in peace, Lee.